Yeah. That's the only thing to do. Jai Guru. Jai Guru. Jai Guru.
John. Yes, yes. Um, I have a question. How long did it take you to completely dissolve your identity when you met Ramakat Maharaj? I mean, it, it took some time to be established in knowing your real sense or it was it was just sudden and conviction. And when going to India, uh, oh. you know, again, I'd spoken about, I felt the sense of presence because mm -hmm. I was in a 12 step program, worked some steps, felt this sense of presence, went to India, knowing that this sense of presence was Maharaj. And I was surrendering to that sense of presence through Maharaj had Skyped with him on a couple of occasions and uh, went to India to surrender. And then Maharaj said, you know, you're not body, you were not body, you're not going to remain the body. And I discussed the sense of presence. I said, so this, this subtle, subtle, this, and then was given the mantra and followed the instructions, just, you know, breathing in all the time, breathe in, breathe out, yeah. mantra. And then the mantra began doing what it does you know i was still moving around and all this kind of stuff but mind was no longer kind of impressing mm. i was gifted with the food poisoning where instead of turning to the normal body-based things of oh this terrible stuff is happening to me i'm so far from mm. home i'm so sick just concentrating on mantra mm getting through the experience without having created an experiencer and knowing then that it's like you're on the other side and this mantra has just the body went through everything that it was going through but i didn't have the experience that i was sick or that yeah. i was in the hospital and uh that's really you know just remaining with mantra all the time but there was such a burning desire to know I, that mantra was constant in, in everything. And at first thoughts had started to slow down as far as, oh. in, and in there's a video of me discussing that with Maharaj where I was afraid that the mantra might start thoughts because the mind was mostly kind of dead most of the time. Like oh. it wasn't really doing anything. Oh. And uh, I asked him, well, this mantra start more thoughts because now I'm concentrating on these words. And he says, these are the final words. These yeah. are the words that are removing anything that's left of you. And the whole, you know, it was just ripe. There was yes. the, the, the ripeness that, you know, when I was writing at Dulles airport that I'm, I know I'm going there to surrender whatever is left of me at the feet of my master, who I know is God in form that's come to basically for me to be able to give gratitude and, and just say, take me completely. And uh, that was the experience. The Maharaj put his hand on, on my head. He, he whispered the words. I And I just continued. Now I did, I will say that after the mantra, we sat and we, we discussed, you know, had our discussion. And then everybody broke up into separate meditations and we all sat in the ashram in our little corners meditating for maybe half an hour, 45 minutes, this and that. But when I got up, I continued mantra. It wasn't like, okay, now I'm done with the meditation and oh. I'm going to go about my daily activity. It was mantra, mantra, mantra. And that was the time where my body went and shaved off the beard and took off the red rocks and had the hair cut and all this sort of stuff, which I never would have done. Oh. Like, even after having done it, there was a lot of impression of fear because I got the food poisoning and it was like, whoa, like I must have offended God because I had these red <laughs> rocks beads and that's where the, they, they were supposed to, according to the guy at the store who sold them to me, oh. amplify the sense of presence. And because I was feeling presence, I thought the beads were amplifying this. The long hair, the beard was basically that sattvic nature had gone to the most extreme. I was like redlining sattva. And that's not good, but it's better than like worldliness. But still, it's, it's to the extreme. 
And this this mantra began like just slowly, silently. It just it erased that. Because I never would have gone and, and done all these things, gotten my hair cut, shaved my beard, all this. The mantra, the movement just happened. There wasn't the thought of what's happening. And then after the food poisoning, I went to Maharaj and, and I said, you know, if I put these beads back on, that that might be the end. Like, you know, I'm going to be reliant on the beads. Mm. And he said, no crutches. His last destination, no crutches. Throw the crutches away. Take the, you know, the red rocks. Do not put it back on. Just keep going. Mantra. And that was it. I mean, there was just full faith and trust in the master. That's true. Yes. And not master in body form. I understood that Maharaj was that presence manifest within the bubble of illusion to free the concept that I'm in bondage. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And when I saw him in America then, it was very nice because, mm -hmm. you know, that, that was like a, if you want to say from the worldly perspective, it was destiny, I suppose, because when he came to America, he wound up only 10 miles up the road from me. Well. <laughs> So, and it was, you know, his son's house was in Columbia and I lived in Laurel. It's literally like, like 10 miles. That's it. So, uh, you know, we went back and forth and we did the, the one circle and everything just started coming together. And uh, there was no doer, no deed. And I couldn't say like, do this and this will happen. Other than the master has said, remain with the mantra. All the time. Never give up the mantra. Continuous running. Continuous. And then there comes a time where you just listen to the mantra running through the body. You're not actually consciously trying to do mantra. It's just, oh, this, this is running. And uh, as things appear before you that seem like they need your attention... When you turn to mantra instead of the things in front of you with so much importance, the mantra naturally dissolves whatever it is in front of you. Oh. It's almost like a video game where you're in the video game and as long as you rely on mantra, you're just clearing the levels and going through all the traps and all the anything that's in your way. You're just remaining with mantra and it's, it's happening. Whereas wow. if you try to take control then that's when everything starts to attack you. But it's, it's, it's a mantra. That, that's really the key, just remaining with mantra and that sense of presence, surrendering everything to that, knowing that that is God, Brahman, Paramatman, Master, this sense of presence, I surrender to this. This sense of presence is manifested as Sri Ramakant Maharaj, Sri Nizagadatta Maharaj, Sri uh, Siddhaveshwar Maharaj. It's the same presence manifest in all these various forms to say the same thing. You're not body, you're that. And as you remain with a sense of presence, then that knowingness happens that whether presence is there or not, I am because this presence has appeared and this presence will disappear. The sense of my existence will no longer be felt if I am not in body form. However, just in that sentence, the sense of my existence will not be felt. Yet, my existence is cool. and can never not be. When Nizargadatta Maharaj says that the dissolution of the entire universe, I am there, yes. this, it, this is true. It, it can't not be that. So you just remain with yourself with self. All the time, be with you always, and not oh. just in in little moments, you know, oh. in, in everything. Oh. And in the beginning, there will be slight disturbances that are. It's a game. Those yeah. slight disturbances are there for you to remain with your selfless self, <clears throat> so that you can get through these without being disturbed. Now, point again to the cold water and the hot water at the ashram. Some mornings it's freezing cold outside and you go to take a shower and the water is 
ice cold. <laughs> this is unacceptable, yes? But when your mantra, it it is a game. It's like you see that you can take a shower with this cold water and not experience the cold water and no longer is the mind troubling you about how cold the water is because the mind is concentrating on mantra and you wind up taking a shower. It, it, it's, you just, you kind of catch the mind complaining about something by eliminating the source of the complaint. Who is this complaint about? I'm just sitting here quietly with mantra. Even sometimes bhajans, some of those bhajans, they seem like they're going to go on forever, like you're going to be a skeleton <laughs> by the time they're done. You know, they have like afternoon bhajan that starts at like five o'clock and it's just going and going and going and going. But again, you're in the rhythm of the bhajan. Don't have the mind sit there and think, my God, this is very long. Will this ever end? You just get into the flow. Because if you sit there and take the touch of the mind complaining about the situation, you've you've you, you've created a complainer <laughs> and you've given it power. Yes. You're listening. Oh, man, gosh, you're right. It's so terrible. This is so <laughs> long, so long. When are we going to sit with Maharaj? But yes. you just get involved. And before you know it, it's finished because you're not thinking about the duration. You're outside of time when you're not concentrating on mm. this limited sense of something. Yes. When you're not pretending to be limited, there's no time, no space, no nothing. It's it, There's not even a sense that you exist other than it's self-evident. I didn't go anywhere. And yeah. appearances and disappear, you know, these things are appearing and disappearing before me. Scenes are coming and going. And that's nothing is really so important. Yet you can still do your job, do your duties. You don't go to your boss and say, well, you know, this job's not so important because in the <laughs> scheme of things, it, it doesn't, it's illusion. <laughs> you can't do that. Yes. And that's how Maharaj says that's egoistic spirituality. You know, when I, before I seeing Maharaj, I was kind of hanging around with the Muji group on Facebook and this and that. And there were a lot of people who were like, you know, leave the world go off into the mountains, beg mm -hmm. for food. And this just doesn't make sense. Maharaj mm -hmm. said, these, these people who go to caves, were you in a cave prior to being this? Mm -hmm. You're in a cave and you're so peaceful and you, you're starting to feel this sense of presence, but this is not life. This is not spirituality. Spirituality is practical spirituality where you do your job, do your duties, remain with all your responsibilities, but you know it's yeah, just scenes you. appearing and disappearing. If you do get caught up, okay, that's the game. Now, your mantra. Okay, mm -hmm. concentrate on mantra. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that. Now it's passed. Instead of creating a complainer complaining about a situation that seems to be happening, you remain with mantra and know that nothing is happening, nothing can happen, and nothing has ever happened. No he, she, it, nothing, nothing, nothing. There's no separation. So these body forms that seem to be giving you trouble in the appearance of illusion yes. are your own self. And that self is basically, you've been given the master key, remain with selfless self. Yes, yes. Mantra. No, this is not okay. This is this is seeming to happen, but it's just like a play. Yeah. It doesn't affect you. How can it affect you? Truly, this that you are, we've talked about, you know, dissolution of the universe. The whole earth could just explode. And it doesn't affect you at all. Mm -hmm. There is no effect. You know, there's no like, it, it, just like in a dream, if you wake up, all the people don't start screaming, oh, no, we're going away, help us. No, it's spontaneous. Yes, yes. yes, yes. The one who's projecting the dream is constant. The dream and all its projections and everything that's projected 
is illusion. It comes and goes. Bodies are created and destroyed or born and die. But you are not. You're not being born. You're not dying. You're not. There's a little bit of confusion and an identification with a body form which creates the concept of an individualized consciousness that's living a life with the <laughs> label of whatever this body's been labeled. But as you know yourself in a real sense, okay, this body is here. This label is affixed to it. But also all these other bodies are here and all these labels are affixed to the, those bodies as well. And there is no individuality. Yeah. You can live fearlessly because there's no one other. There's nothing other. There's nothing. There's, there's no no strife, no worries, no nothing. Even if momentary a feeling comes, you know, this feeling passes. Mm. If you don't create a feeler of this feeling that doesn't want to feel the feeling and mm. gives power and energy, mm. you create this little creature <laughs> that's having yeah. all these troubles. Yes, yes. And then you say, oh, the world is so terrible. Everything's so bad. <laughs> but it's not true. Yes, yes. But your power, your energy, given to any... That's why Maharaj says, spirit impresses very quickly. Oh. You know, you say, oh, it's cold outside. And then Nizagadatta Maharaj talked about the dogs barking. Oh, it's cold outside. Oh, it's very cold. It's very cold. It's very cold. I'm outside. I'm shivering. I'm very cold. I start paying attention to every part of my body. Oh, it's very cold. It's very cold. Whereas if I remain with mantra, I probably am just outside. I put a jacket if it's needed. Just like he says, if it rains, take an umbrella. <laughs> but it's, it's not like, oh, why is it raining? Oh, this is so <laughs> terrible. It's raining and I'm going to get wet. and This is bad and all this. Yeah. No, yes. if it rains, take an umbrella. Yes. Yes. Literally everything is pick up the water, drink it, put it down. Constant, spontaneous action in the moment. Without having to create an actor. Without having to take credit for any actions. Yes. yes. Because to whom is going to take the credit? If you put all these people in a room and some are doing good and some are doing bad, which one are you? Well, you identify with the label of the body in which you're seeing the world, but the reality is you're all the good and the bad in the room. Well, because without you, nothing is. Yes. Thank you. Oh, yes, yes. Jaguar. Sorry, Keith, I didn't mean to mute you. It was just there were noises in the background. So that's why I did it. But feel free to unmute. Thank I'm not connecting well today. It seems like a lot of fear. Maybe you can't even hear me. Yeah, I can. But I just, I, I went in, I normally don't do that, but I put you on mute just because it was like popping behind. Oh, you can't hear me? Well, I can sort of, yes. You are popping. Yes. Definitely. You're making a uh, difference. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, settled down some, but uh, make it hard to listen uh, for a long while. Break. So, play. 
So yeah, no, two weeks very, ago, I think. It's very challenging. Well, well last didn't have meeting. Do what? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, Keith. I can't. I have. Yeah, sorry. We we can't hear you. Yeah, sorry. We can't hear you. I guess I just said I'm not going to put you on mute, but I'm going to put you on mute again. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> we need to put our minds on mute, John. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Continuous. And mantra does this automatically. Mm. You don't have to fight mine because if you fight mine, then you're creating a fighter of mine, and mine is very happy now because it's like, oh yes, <laughs> yes we have yes. an adversary. Let's fight and and <laughs> yes, uh, yes. Like the the concept of you know, don't think of a pink elephant. Oh, <laughs> and now you're thinking pink elephant because <laughs> right away you're like, no, 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 I can't think of pink elephant. I'm not supposed to ever think of pink elephant. <laughs> so, but mantra, that is the master key because slowly, silently, and permanently, you're erasing all the illusory layers. And there's no need to fight. There's no need to push away or, or to say, oh, I have to kill my mind. Mine would love for you to put, plant a flag and say, I'm going to kill my mind. <laughs> I think it was Ramana Maharshi who said, you, you, you hire the thief to catch the thief. You say, <laughs> I'm going to destroy this mind of mine. No, you just <laughs> mantra. Master said, just remain with mantra continuous in all your waking activities. Meditation is not sitting like mm. we were talking 45 minutes, one hour sitting. No, it's walking down the street and mantra is running. It's making lunch, mantra is running. Being at the grocery store, mantra is running. At first, checking in with your selfless self until there's nothing except your selfless self. And then just remaining with your selfless self by not checking out. <laughs> when you are at work, John, the mantra continues. There's no, like, there's just doing job, doing duties, yeah. taking care of whatever comes, phone rings, answer the phone, do this, do that, job is finished. Even in a meeting, coming up with ideas or whatever, okay, participate fully. But there's not a, there's not a, it, it's just like Maharaj says, when you know, okay, I'm a man, you don't have to keep saying, I'm a man, I'm a man, I'm a man, I'm a man. Everything is just going and coming and coming and going. If something does arise that impresses, then okay. Use this body. Okay, just for a moment. Refreshing my memories. Oh. And everything's okay. Everything's always okay. It may appear oh. that it's not in a moment. And you just go, oh, me with your selfless self. And we talked about five elemental body. Body's still going to feel, you know, just like the sky has rain and sun and cloudy day and all this. This is a five elemental body. As long as you're holding a five elemental body, there's going to be disturbance in the five elements. And it's going to translate into this is a feeling. But you remain with the feeler, not the feeling. The feeler is that you are. The feeling is just an illusory layer on top. And you don't have to fight the feeling. You don't have to say, oh, my God, I've done so much meditation. I'm not supposed to feel depressed. 
Yeah. Instead of even jumping into the thought of feeling depressed, remain with your selfless self. And then you'll notice, oh, that, that passed. Oh. In the same way, extreme happiness. Okay, happiness is there, but happiness comes internally. If happiness is coming from outside, then it can fluctuate. It can be taken away or provided more. And if it's taken away, then, of course, you're very sad. I want more happiness. I'm not happy anymore. I was happy a moment ago, but now I'm not happy. I buy a new car. I'm very happy. I drive the car for a little while. I'm not as happy as I was when I bought the car new. My first payment comes in. I'm a little less happy than when I bought the new car. <laughs> but if happiness is coming from inside, there's no external source. Like Maharaj says, money, power, sex, these things come and go. And a little bit, you may want more. So instead, the internal happiness is always there, regardless of the outside circumstance. And that internal happiness is just that, oh, so that I, I am that. The I that I thought I was, was the disturbance. Ooh. And when I know myself in a real sense, that I is no longer disturbing. It's just like out here somewhere, and I don't need to pay attention. And yet, yeah, you're still doing your job fully. You're still, you know, you're still participating in life fully. Probably more so because you're not so concentrated on what the mind is saying about the situation. Yes. Where everything that you do is through a layer of dirty glass. That's how you're seeing the world, Ooh. through all your wants and desires and hopes and dreams and all these sort of things about you. But when that dirty glass is completely clear because there's no more illusory layers between you, then it's, it's clean. It, it's a, a very light feeling. And go through the world very nicely, scenes appearing and disappearing, and just enjoying 